man, this one new feature in Adobe Lightroom for the iPad changes everything about how I edit photos. Oh boy, this is cool. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning back in. Hope you're all having a great day. A few weeks ago, Adobe released a new version of Adobe Lightroom for the iPad, and some of the features in it are just unreal. It's super cool. It literally changes how I edit my photos. My workflow is flipped upside down. So let me tell you a little bit about what I do. I'm not a professional photographer. I'm into automotive photography. I'm into cars. And as a result, I take pictures of my own cars and edit them and post them on Instagram. At 911 thing is one of the pages where I upload or at least post on a daily basis. So what I used to do before was I import all of my pictures into Lightroom and then I would export it to Photoshop and work with Lightroom, Photoshop and Camera Raw to edit some of those pictures. But with this new version of Adobe Lightroom for the iPad, wow, editing, is such a cool thing to do now. You know, I literally wake up in the morning, have my cup of coffee, and I'll start editing away as like a, a stress relief. Enough of that, let's dive into an example of what I do with this new feature and how I edit my photos for Instagram. So what we have here is my GT3 RS. I took these pictures early in the, in the summer and I haven't edited a whole bunch of them. So the composition and all that is fair. The highlights are blown out a little bit. I don't quite have the sky. Now, this one feature of Adobe Lightroom for iPad literally makes me want to throw my MacBook Pro out the window. It's essentially this masking functionality that's been uh, uh, updated for this new version of Adobe Lightroom. It's essentially masking on steroids. It's unreal. So let's say I want to select the subject here. Very quickly, it selects the car and the plane. That's very accurate. <laughs> but what I really want to do is isolate the background so I can work with the highlights and crank down the shadows and, and so on. So now that it's selected, I can invert the selection. Very quickly, I can then isolate just the car and, and select everything in the background. So with this, you can subtract or add to the mask. So in this case, I want to add to the mask. I'll use the brush tool and then you just brush away. What's really cool about using Apple Pencil with Lightroom is that it's also pressure sensitive. So the harder you press, the deeper or the harder the flow is with your brush. The lighter you press, the lighter the flow. And there you go. I essentially selected or deselected the plane in the background and I've only selected the car. Some parts of the car are semi-highlighted here, but I don't necessarily want that. So I want to erase some of those away. So let's subtract them from the mask, use the brush, and then I'll erase away those selected areas so that I get the car nice and detailed. So one thing's uh, important to kind of mention here, maybe it's something that I'm learning and getting better at. You notice how this bottom part of the car has been, uh, has been selected from the background as well. You can't, You don't necessarily want to make it flush with the edges of the car because then it looks, it may end up looking fake. You want a little bit of wrap around the edges of the car so the effects are a little subtle and it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. So we'll do a little more adjustments here. There you go. And you notice the wing isn't fully selected. So we can do that quickly, very quickly as well. So subtract from the selection, 
do this really quickly. So that's one aspect of it. So now we'll continue doing the rest of it. You don't have to be over precise about this. Just do it nice and quick. And there you go. And that's good enough for now. So I've got the car selected or the background selected. We've now isolated the car from the background. Now you can control various things about the background. So let's crank down the exposure just a little bit. Bring the highlights down a little bit. So now you're starting to see details in the sky a little bit. And then bring up the contrast. And bring up the shadows a little bit. So right away, you notice a huge difference from the way it was before to now. It creates a really cool, subtle separation between the car and the background. It makes the car pop a little bit more. We can do a global uh, adjustment here as well. Bring down the highlights a little bit. The shadows are good. There's a lot of details in the car, but we need to make the blacks black a little bit. So bring that down. Maybe bring up the whites a little bit. Uh, and there you go. So very quickly, I was able to create this separated look between the car and the background and make the car pop. Now, this used to be a very involved process with Photoshop and Camera Raw before, do all these mass selections, all that. But this, on the iPad, it's so accessible for just any, any photographer now with this functionality. For me, that's a game changer. That's my, my go-to feature for automotive photography. So what do you guys think? Pretty cool, huh? Would you use this functionality? Are you using this functionality already? Are you a Lightroom user or another editing software of your choice? I just think Lightroom for iPad is just so powerful. It allows you to edit on the go. You can take this along on your photo, or a photo shoot day plug it into your camera, import all of the raw files onto your iPad, and then just edit away. You don't need your bulky laptop anymore. There's also one other thing I wanted to show, and this is the, the mass selections. All, a lot of these we are familiar with, the brush, the linear gradient, radial gradient, and so on. The color range is quite interesting. You can pick certain aspects of the background, or certain colors in your image, so for example, now I just want to isolate the yellow. Let's kind of apply that. And now you can change that. Adjust the saturation, I'll give it some color, make it a little red because the sun is shining down that way. I'll crank up the temperature a little bit. It's pretty amazing what you can do with this now. You can then crank the clarity a little bit so it pops. There you go, very subtle little changes and the image is transformed. I'll be doing a lot more edits like this. It's gonna be part of my daily workflow now, editing pictures for, for Instagram. I'm not saying that there isn't room for Photoshop and the capabilities of Photoshop's are unreal. It's beyond what I, I'm capable of right now. This is just some basic editing. You know, when you start retouching and doing composite work and all of that, then obviously Photoshop's the way to go. But I think once Photoshop has all of that capability on the Photoshop app for iPad, it's game over. I don't think people are gonna edit photos on, on laptops anymore or desktops anymore. Why would you? You could do this on the go. Anyways, that's it for this video, everyone. I wanted to just do a quick video, just showcasing the, the capabilities of this new, new version of the software and just how I use it to edit. Now it's not a full edit, obviously. This is just one aspect of the editing workflow where when it comes to automotive photography, I'm, I always try to focus on creating a separation between the car and the background, just so the car will pop and then give it appropriate adjustments to the foreground and the background to, to make pictures pop for Instagram. If you all think that I should do more of this on a regular basis, please let me know in the comment. It'd be nice to do a series like this for, for the channel and just show you all how I edit uh, pictures for my Instagram. 
Well, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Winter's here. We're not going to be driving this green GT3 RS as much anymore. It's going to be parked away, tucked away under life support for another four months. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to edit pictures that we've taken over the summer. And with that, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.